Ha! It's Today in Nerd History. Bet you didn't know who it was. It was me. <laughs> it was me. Today in Nerd History! Bad news, guys. The war is over and CGI won. The days of cool Ray Harryhausen stop motion, Toho city stomping, Lucas miniature exploding practical effects are unfortunately over. And while an occasional amazing practical heavy movie comes along like Mad Max Fury Road, nothing will change producers' mind that CG is the way to go, even for times where it doesn't even make sense. This isn't about good CGI versus bad CGI, no. This is about five baffling uses of CGI in movies. Why? Number five, John Wick's Digital Duke. John Wick is one of the most refreshing original action movies in recent memory. It has tight, meaty, exhilarating sequences that forgo all the typical cliche trappings of now popular, bland, nondescript digital punch em up set pieces. Which makes it just that much more confusing that John Wick's cute cannon fodder puppy lays a real emoji of a computer crafted steamer at the beginning of the movie. According to the movie's commentary track, the artistry and craftsmanship that went into sculpting that stinky dollop cost him the ballpark of $5,000. And why they didn't send a PA down to Spencer's Gifts to pick up a pile of fake dog crap for $1.50 is beyond me, but at least saying that CGI looks like shit is finally a positive thing. Number four, 50 shades of gray pubes, or uh, 50 pubes of gray. Pubes in Fifty Shades of Grey. When tiptoeing the line of acceptably crass mediocrity, the Fifty Shades of Grey makers had to prepare for all contingencies. This meant hiding the lead actor's shame glands with discreet prosthetics that could be digitally painted over when they slipped into frames. And they did, and they were painted over with pubes. That means it was somebody's job to fixate on the thickness and color and texture of a stranger's pubes, which is normally just a fun hobby. So as far as labored, artificial, confusingly complex, but ultimately stupid things go, digitally Pain and Merkins are actually a pretty good thematic adaptation of the book. Number three, nudity. Thanks to our new and terrible digital age, we now have a bizarre half measure when actors don't want to do nude scenes. Jessica Alba okayed this technique when she filmed Machete, because somehow it made sense to spend tons of money and man hours to take off the clothes of an attractive woman, but stop short of actually depicting her naughty parts. The 2011 movie The Change Up, which for some reason billed itself as a comedy, also tried to trick you into thinking that you saw its two female leads in the buff. Both Olivia Wilde and Leslie Mann covered their bits with pasties that were painted out in post. Leslie Mann reportedly even requested that they size up her goods in the editing room. If only they could have airbrushed some jokes into the movie, then we'd be getting somewhere. Number two, Steven Spielberg soils his most beloved movies. It's egregious, and you already know about it, but it's also too insane not to cover. Maybe Spielberg was coming back to E.T. with new perspective after having children of his own, but that's no excuse for swapping out the cop's shotguns for walkie-talkies. Thankfully, he repented for this decision in the Blu-ray release. The same thing happened to Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, but this time there wasn't even any perceived child endangerment. All it took was someone looking at this Nazi butthole flying off a cliff and deciding that this matte painting wasn't good enough for the HD broadcast version. So someone whipped up a weird computer-generated clip face. Spielberg relented yet again in this case, and the Blu-ray release reverted back to the original shot. Yes! Number one, the pear! Oh my god, the pear from episode two. Look, you can't blame George Lucas for wanting to use CGI to realize exotic alien races and fantastical landscapes and exciting space battles. No. The real crime here is Padme's pear. This pear doesn't exist. It's a computerized figment of a fruit, which should be made painfully obvious by the way it just slides onto the fork. And if that doesn't convince you, the bite Natalie Portman takes looks like a toddler trying ice cream for the first time. And all the team had to do was go down to the local bodega and pick up a pear, put it on a string, and fix the picture later. This is the worst abuse of special effects in a movie where every single clone trooper is made of CGI. In fact, let's talk about replacing real things with computer graphics. Bonus round replacing awesome practical effects with CGI. Most of the time, special effects choices are made in pre-production, but sometimes a movie will start shooting before they choose to use CGI, and you get a glimpse at what could have been. Check out these monsters from I Am Legend. Pretty spooky, huh? But here's what we ended up with instead, some stretchy goofballs that look like they belonged in the zombie mode of a wrestling video game on PlayStation 2. If you haven't seen the Percy Jackson sequel, Sea of Monsters, well, still don't, but now you have one more reason not to. Despite the fantastic work on this animatronic Cyclops, all that sweat and soul was swept under the rug in favor of the same bland CGI you see in every other movie. Something like Jurassic Park holds up really well because of a smart mixture of computer generated and practical effects. But these days, Hollywood doesn't want to compromise. When a talented effects team hands in some ridiculously great work for something like 2011's The Thing, all it takes is an exec to say, the kids won't like this, and suddenly it becomes an impersonal mess of weightless polygon. 
Legends. Okay, so 2011's The Thing wasn't great to begin with. And would the original effects have saved the new movie? No, but that's just it. Why the hell would you take away one of the only unique aspects of your crappy movie? What, because some diggers in a suit thinks that everything has to be a cartoon? You might say that the movie machine has finally gone pear-shaped. Oh, look, it's a pear. Oh, delicious. It's good. Gulp. You like that, George?